The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. Eric's Family Barbecue has arrived and is simply the best barbecue in Arizona. Come satisfy your taste buds with meats that are smoked over mesquite wooden sides that are made with fresh ingredients and tons of love. They have the best, juiciest brisket, pulled pork, rib sausage, turkey, or everyone's favorite, the Pitmaster Sampler that includes all the meat in four sides. Mac and cheese, potato salad, coleslaw, corn, or beans, yum. And for dessert, try some creamy banana pudding. Amazing. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be sorry. Dine in or take it to go. Go to Eric's Family bbq.com for more info you thought that was funny Holmberg's morning sickness. you were laughing like a hyena when he said it Idiot. what the hell is wrong with you K-U-K-U-D. with uh, kevin Rowe yeah. of learner and row and i just uh, got an email actually which we were talking about off right. there about how incredibly successful that backpack thing was the other day and despite <laughs> brett who was on his way over there but they bailed out like they were out of well, backpack yeah they ran out it was such a huge yeah. thing so it's, yeah. i got halfway there and randall's like turn it around like, yeah. okay so to anybody who looks at them and says oh these lawyers are blah 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 yeah uh these guys are awesome so the learn and row gives back thing was amazing and they blew out of those backpacks so fast so thanks to everybody who helped out both directions and again keep your eyes open at uh, learner and row gives back.com for their next thing and i'll talk to kevin today about some stuff but uh and see what they've got going but it was pretty awesome and brett was yeah. on his way out there and they're like, we're out. There's nothing to do. I mean, you can come out here or you don't have to, but it was pretty great. So congratulations to those guys. I like to mention those kind of things when uh, charity events go well. I don't care what. And it was KDKB. It was our sister station that was there earlier in the day, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. They, mean, were, they, they were there before us. They were, look, that's all for good. So when it's for good, don't, I, I'm not competitive when it comes right. to no, absolutely. that kind of stuff. Uh, I mean, they, they, if, they can, if they can win out with KDKB helping them out, my God, imagine what would have happened with a real station. They're huge. But like I say, I'm not competitive. I don't no, want. No. I don't want to bash them. I mean, all eight of their listeners must have shown up like thirty or forty times over again. But <laughs> no, it's pretty great. So, uh, so congrats to Learner and Row. They're good dudes, uh, top to bottom. They they make the community better. So, just wanted to say that real quick before, and then uh, maybe now Kevin will buy me lunch for this uh, lovely nice. little promotion. And you'll get paid if you're in an accident. <laughs> and also that. I mean, yeah. I don't want to you know, kind of minimize it. I mean, cheapened it a little bit, Brady, but okay, whatever. <laughs> that was a nice moment. You kind of cheapened it, but okay, okay. That There's that. <laughs> there's also it's also the basic business of everything. Yo, you get some payments, yo. <laughs> I got to get paid. Got to get paid, player. Also great charity work. <laughs> uh, it is time now for Brady to solve all the world's problems. We call this What Would Brady Do? He'd get paid, yo. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's brought to you by our friends at M&P Guns over there at 12th Street and Indian School. If you want to head on over there, my goodness, then I suggest uh, you do it. They still got their moving sale they're going moving. on, too. Yeah, yeah, they're still moving, and they're moving slow. I rode by there on my bike. I was coming back from yeah. downtown. I rode my bike back home from downtown and uh, saw it, and I'm like, man, they got a lot going on, but they're going to have to do some moving. So then instead of moving merchandise, they're trying to move it into your hands so they don't have to lift. Yeah, up to Smart. 35 up to 35% off from what Byron said on a few things. Wow. Like, yeah, all right. Like, That's fantastic. So get all over that deal. Uh, <clears throat> MMP Guns is right there on 12th Street and Indian School. For all your firearm needs, look no further. What I got here? Okay. Ready, Brady? Ready. Oh, wait. This is, uh, I'm gonna say, I got a couple of them because we're late. Here we go. Dear Brady, my kids are 13 and 11 years old. At what age should I let them cuss? I know they're doing it. Uh, they'll reprimand them, and it's getting silly. Bobby, what age? Your kid's right in the middle of that. Yeah, she, she cuss? She hears it all. She's not really um, much of a cusser. No. But her friends do. She has plenty of friends. That do you do. allow that in the house, the friends to cuss? Um, No, we really haven't. You never heard that, it? No, there haven't been that many friends over. I mean, we're oh. still kind of lockdown mode. They're They're all... Oh. Now, on, you know, in their chat groups and stuff like that. Probably sure loaded with it. Because we found right. out when Toledo's kid was about 12 or 13, that BBC stuff was getting floated around <laughs> and the cussing was nonstop. But in the house, I, no, no. No cussing. Now, yeah. if Kirby cussed, would you allow it? Like, um, she goes, hey, what the f*** is going on over here, you old I'd, pirate? I'd be upset with that. Yeah. yeah? No. So you're not going to talk, like, don't talk yeah. like a whore? Yep. Yeah. Not around Fantastic. your parents. That's right. Just out of uh, respect. I don't disagree with that. So you don't. What what is a proper age to start letting them become 
uh, more adult. I guess the feeling is uh, at this age they are hearing it. Oh, yeah, and saying but, it. But it's, it's up to her because I actually have a talk with uh, Kirby about that. And she just kind of says, you know, and also I'm her dad, so maybe that's a little. She's like, I'm not really a big cusser. Not yet, yeah, but like one it. of my friends do it. And I'm I'm okay. That's their choice, right? Um, and I kind of said, well, that's how I was kind of growing up too. Same. And a lot had to do with probably my parents just saying, I, if I don't cuss around my parents, then I wasn't allowed you know. to cuss in the house. Yep, I never even tested it. No. I didn't cuss much till I was about eighteen, nineteen, even generally. I wasn't much of a cusser. Probably, eh, probably my senior year of high school, I started getting let fly a little. It was uh, kind of more of, a, you know, formal. Type of deal, or just you know, not only respect, or you, yeah. you just don't talk that way. Yeah, I remember working at Tony Roma's. Everybody did it, and I remember the day I kind of said, "Start saying the f word a lot." I, mean, I, I just remember just you're getting, all in. Huh? I was just kind of like, "I'm going to start saying it more." I was probably 17. And again, it depends on you know the room and the place right. where you're at. I mean, if uh, you know if you're going in for a job. At, sure, uh, you don't want to start throwing the bombs. <laughs> right. You got to know better when. <laughs> to but start, it's yeah. funny we've kind of lost that. Yeah, there, there are, are some, some people, people who... I don't really realize that or say, what's the, you know. So you think it's just fine that this 13 or 11 year old, no cussing. You get in trouble for cussing yeah. still because mom and dad say. You want to cuss around your friends and stuff? Right. Not not in the house. Don't let me catch it. Yep. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, did yep. you, you were probably allowed to cuss when you were a kid. Yeah, it was big. I mean, the, the Italian side's always cussing and everything. Yeah. And then my dad being a truck driver, that doesn't, oh. you know, so I, I was allowed to, <laughs> but. I was not allowed to use it towards them. Oh, yeah. Because then I'll get a smack across the mouth. Yeah. And I got a smack across the mouth. What the times, f- but... kind of language is this, you yeah. piece of s***? <laughs> what do you learn, this? Huh? Yeah, because, uh, you know, there's a couple of times it might happen. Have, hasn't happened yet. Right. Us, but it's kind of funny. I remember I mean, my, my brother when he was really young. Yeah. Like four or five, he, was, he heard the words somewhere, picked them up, and he was just using them. He didn't know what they met yeah, he, <laughs> he, just, he got in trouble he was at catholic school at recess and he's playing kickball or whatever and he's like F this, dude. and yeah. but he he didn't know using it out of context does your brother cuss no he's not a cusser no no i've never heard a cuss word come out of my dad's mouth oh i know that yeah he wow. can do himself but my brother i don't yeah he's he doesn't really cuss few. around me still but your dad said hair pie to me that was better than cussing. he'll he'll dance all around him <laughs> oh yeah he said he never did that. Said, it's a woman's hair pie. Like, oh, God, I'm having this conversation with you. That's, oh, I don't like going down there. That's, that's a woman, bull poop. That's there, a woman's you know. hair pie. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was repulsed by it. <laughs> Good God, no. That's just, it's a woman's suit. Oh, it's, it's where all the filth falls out. Ugh. Anyway, you don't put your face there. Num, would you, num, num, would num. you lick the toilet? For God's sakes, Brady, are you doing that? Who? Oh, Repulsive. Yeah, Dad. You know, stop being such a f- baby. Uh, here's a good one. This one's going to get you because <laughs> you got a young daughter. Yep. So this one's going to get you. This one makes me uncomfortable. Uh, dear Brady, my son's got himself a huge dangler. His girlfriend is a very small girl. They are both virgins. I know this because he talked to his mother the other day about he and his girlfriend taking each other's flowers. Uh, Yeah, my wife has those talks with the kids. Anyway, no joke, the kid's packing 10 inches, and it's thick. It's remarkable. Uh, It must be on his mom's side because I ride mediums. Uh, I can't, in good conscience, allow this child to destroy that little girl with that thing. She needs to warm up or something. This is like going against Max Scherzer in the first Little League. (laughs) What would Brady do? Tie. Oh, man. I'm uncomfortable. (laughs) You can't can't do anything about it. Sure you can you completely to have to. Base. You got to teach them two or three. Three. <laughs> Look, if you're having this kind of open conversation, yeah. Well, if you're that open about it, you might want to say, "Look, it, it could be a little difficult at first. Breaking the ball I had, glove. I had some. Um, I remember growing up, a couple of friends saying they couldn't do it with their yeah, yeah. girlfriends. Yeah, you got to get some, some like toys. Just not, and stuff. not ready yet. To yeah. You know, you got to tenderize the meat. Yeah. You can't just go throwing that up against the chicken and throw it in the oven. That thing is not going to fly. And then you're going to ruin her for all other people. Potentially. I mean, you're going to wreck her anyway. you got to, you got to, look, you, when you first buy a baseball glove, you don't go to the field with it. 
You put a ball you in put it, it. You, you oil wrap it, up, it and put it under your mattress. Yeah, just like your girlfriend. You tie her in a ball yeah. and you stuff her under the mattress till she's ready. Break it. You got to break that thing in. So I suggest stuffing a baseball in there and tying her legs together. No. Oh. <laughs> that's not bad. I don't know women's bodies at all. I think that's how they do it. But, yeah, you can't, you can't have super hog breaking virgins. He can't do that to her. You're right. As a, that's a good father. He'll right find there. out. Oh, you don't want to do that to that girl, that little. Angel. Well, no, but I'm saying that probably, you know, sometimes you can't. Not ready. She's not going to be ready for that. Yeah. A lot of experienced veterans aren't ready for that. <laughs> yeah. So if that would happen and you happen to see your beloved young daughter's boyfriend at the gym or something, you're like, oh, my God. And then they sit down and have to talk to you. Yeah, she's dating Julio Gomez. <laughs> We would like to take each other's flowers. Oof. Yeah. Uh, uh, no. And what are you going to do? You don't want her to go out that way. She talk her into dating Asians and stuff. <laughs> At least little, to start with. That Kim Kwan well, boy is nice. You should talk <laughs> to him. Let me introduce more. you to. I got your math tutor. <laughs> hey, how you go? Let's have at it. She's all yours, kid. Yeah, you got to break him in. I don't think. I don't think. Uh, you should ask a mom. Because I think mom should be told. You've seen For our sure. kids dangle, be... right? You've seen his. Yeah, what does is, what is, uh, the missus think about oh, the situation? Gotta, well, that's the other thing. Mom's getting a little open about these conversations. And then you're going to have a, a lunatic on your hands. Because you give her 10 to start, that's starting too high. You can't start there. No. You can't start there. You need a starter kit. This kid needs to be dating much, uh, much higher than the virgin pay grade. Uh, plant drugs on your son and send him to jail for a few years and just keep him out of that realm. Oh, my God. I know a guy whose kid, uh, this one, he's a teenager, probably 14. He's like, it's mammoth. The Keystone Pipeline. <laughs> it is mammoth. He goes, I don't know where he got it, but it's ridiculous. And I don't know what to do to tell him like what to do with that because he's going to hurt somebody. Jesus. I know. I never had that talk. That would be a tough one. Make you feel good as a kid, though. Imagine Torp coming in your bedroom. I've seen your dangler, oh boy. You got to use that on an experienced pro, a salty old vet. You can't go jamming that into some freshman. Crying <laughs> let's go to loud. Cuba. Yeah, let's head to Cuba. I'll get you all fired up. Now, the boy can do whatever he wants, but you can't go taking virginity with one of those. Can't do it. Brett, did you ever have that talk with your dad? What's that? Your mom? I'm thinking about losing my virginity to this girl. Absolutely not. I never, no. Yeah, it's crazy. Your, your dad didn't pay which for it. Which seems like a you know, which, <laughs> <laughs> which seems like a weird conversation to have with your parents anyway. Though you never have that no. talk. No, like, I would never even. I still wouldn't have that talk no. with my mom and dad. I had mine three years ago. Yeah, we made Brady's parents come and have the birds and bees talk with them because Are you serious. Yeah, well, they never had it, and then we found out why. None of them know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I know one thing. Three miracles in the family. Yeah. <laughs> working that working that face angle was not an option. You ever put it down there? God, no. You turn her over and cover her up like she's dead. It was pretty great. I don't know. Congrats to your kid on the dangler, but definitely warn the virgin. And have that wife of yours go out there and buy some, you know, like the evolution of man chart of dildos. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, a toolkit. Oh, my God. I never thought of that from a girl's perspective. You like a guy, and he's got a, got a full-out craftsman hanging off of the front of him. <laughs> anyway, this makes Brady very uncomfortable. Cause, <laughs> it's an uncomfortable talk, well, for it's, sure. It's an uncomfortable yeah. talk because you've got that coming. <laughs> You're just a few short years away from maybe your little angel being that open with you. We're going to take each other's flowers. Oh, God, kill me now. You don't come in here with that talk around me. What's happening? Toledo. Got a counterpoint. Okay. How dare you deny that girl the pleasure of a giant rod, it says. Trust me, I love my husband, but he's average and our sex is phenomenal. But you know why it is? Because my second boyfriend was the biggest I've ever had and it taught me what to do and what not to do. Shelly. See, this is what you're doing. You're, you're creating another Shelly that can't stop thinking of that giant rod her whole life. You're wrecking her. You giant rod guys have a lot of responsibility. 
<laughs> use it. I don't wreck it for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, don't go ruining these girls. But they're already fragile mentally anyway. You start giving them one of those, and that's what they expect. <laughs> Gets expensive. It's like taking Brady to a V restaurant afterwards. He's going to hate it. <laughs> Where's the meat? I know. I don't have any. I can't give you what the last guy gave you. Enough with the tofurkey. Yeah. Sorry, Shelly. My husband. I love my husband, but he's average, and our sex is phenomenal. But you know why? Because the giant wang showed me the way. But you said it was your second boyfriend, so your ball glove had already been broken in, Shelly. Can't do that, Shelly. Anyway, wow. Very uncomfortable, Brady. And all you with kids? <gasps> Sorry you had them. Not my fault. <laughs> We'll never have this talk. Hello. Hello. High five. High five. The there it is. <laughs> we'll just be laughing at, at Brady when he comes in. He goes, ah, Kirby limps. <laughs> <laughs> I told him not to try it. Hey, old pirate, wheel me over there. I got to call my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I need the sense of life again. I feel dead from the waist down. It's no fun. I wouldn't want kids, man. I'd run. I'd Toledo's dad this whole situation now if I was you. Especially now. There you go, everybody. That is what Brady did, and it was awkward. Oh, my gosh. Shut the front door. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com.